Hi, I'm Lorraine and I'm a networking junkie. But unlike people with other habits, I'm not looking for a 12-step program to cure me of this habit. Hi, I'm Lorraine and I'm a LinkedIn networking junkie. But unlike people with other addictions, I'm not looking for a 12-step program to cure me of this habit because I think LinkedIn is healthy for my business. What I have done is I've developed a six-part process that allows me to use the time that I spend on LinkedIn well and get the results that I'm hoping for. And that's what I want to talk about today. Now, it's going to take way longer than 30 minutes to really dive into each of these topics. And so I'm just going to touch on the first five briefly and then really focus on creating content. But here's the key. If you don't do these other five things well, you're wasting your time on your content. So let's get started. First, you need to define your objective. You need to figure out why you're on LinkedIn and what you're hoping to accomplish. I know, I know, you, you want to sell more. But the reality is, for most of us, it is unrealistic to think that people are going to go from, I don't know who you are, to here's my checkbook. And so, as you think about what you're doing on LinkedIn, you need to figure out, what is a realistic outcome and work towards that outcome. For many of us, it used to be, well, I'd like people to click through to my website. And while that is a good goal, it is really hard to achieve right now because we are in what is known as a zero click environment. LinkedIn is actually biasing on content that does not have an outbound link. They are more likely to share and serve up content that keeps people on the platform. And so as you're looking at your goals and objectives, you need to adjust your expectations. You need to focus on generating engagement that drives visibility. You need to focus your energy around the first hour, and we're going to talk more about how you do that with your content. And you have to keep in mind that there is a penalty for outbound links. And so in this world, in this zero-click world, you need to define your objectives very narrowly. Do you want to increase visibility of your profile? Do you want to build a wider audience? Do you want to get more people to interact with your content, watch your videos, whatever it is, be specific, write it down and tape it on the corner of your computer monitor. So every time you log into LinkedIn, you know why you're there. The second thing you need to do is you have to find your community. You're not just wandering around LinkedIn like you stumble around some network event throwing your cards everywhere. You have a specific target customer that you are trying to reach and you're trying to reach them through LinkedIn. So get specific about who your ideal client is and then get specific about what is it that they're doing on the platform. The more you understand about their goals and objectives, the easier it's going to be to find them and to find people who are likely to influence them. At the end of the day, it's not you swimming around by yourself. What will make you stand out on LinkedIn is being a standout member of a community recognized for your thought leadership. And so once you identify that community, you can start thinking about the kind of content you will need to create to attract their attention. And you want to make sure that after you attract their attention and they go look you up, that you're somebody that they actually want to get to know. Make sure you have 
a good picture, a good headline, a solid description of who you are and what you do. Invest a little time in getting people to write reviews and recommendations and keep that photo current. You do not want to have a photo up there that was taken 10 years ago. This is your first introduction to the community. Make it count. As you're growing that community, one of the things that's really important to remember is that social media is about ego. And if you want to be successful, you need to feed that ego. Think about when you share content on LinkedIn or on any social platform for that matter. If people comment and interact with you and give you the little like, thumbs up, you feel good. And when nobody notices, well, it's kind of sad. And so what you want to do is engage, be social. The majority of the time you spend on LinkedIn should be spent liking, commenting, and interacting with other people. It is not about pushing your content. Yes, you will have to create content so people know what you're about, but that can be scheduled. And we're going to talk about that. But the majority of what you do on LinkedIn should be engagement driven. You want to be strategic about your engagement. You will begin to identify people that are thought leaders in your community, find their posts, comment on their posts, and don't just comment on the main post. Take that extra minute and read through some of the comments and find two or three that are worth commenting on as well, because those people are trying to get noticed also. And when you do that, it is much easier to take that next step to connect one contact at a time. My goal on LinkedIn this year was to grow my LinkedIn community. I felt like if I had more people that I was connected to, there would be more people that would be seeing my messages and interacting with me. And it really has paid off. I have actually added about 1,300 people in six months. And I did it one connection at a time. When I see that a friend of mine, so an associate has shared something, I get in and I like and comment on what they're doing. And then I take a minute and look at who else is liking their content, who else is interacting and engaging with their content. And I very strategically reach out to those people. I go to their profile, I check them out, and I have a standard note that I send that just says, hey, Mary, I noticed that you are a fan of, insert name a person here, so am I. I'd love to connect with you. Sometimes I also say things like, I don't have any secondary agenda, I just like connecting with interesting people. The vast majority of people that I reach out to with that very friendly message typically respond by and connect with me. I've had some great conversations as a result. And often, if I want to be sure that they really pay attention to me, before I send the note, I'll go back and look at some of their posts and take a minute to like, comment, or share on their post building the connections. And then I routinely go through my contact list and I have probably 8,500 people I'm connected with. And I sort the list and randomly click on their profile, comment, like, share. What that does is it changes the algorithm. It puts new content in my feed and it's likely to put me in their feed again. And when I show up in their feed, I want to make sure that I have 
interesting content for them to interact with, like, share, comment, and get a sense of who I am and what I can do for them. And so as I'm posting content on LinkedIn and as you're thinking about your LinkedIn plan, this is the most important piece. You need to have a plan. You cannot just wake up in the morning and go, you know what? I'm going to put this on LinkedIn today. First off, it is incredibly time consuming. And without that strategic underneath it, it's kind of a one shot, one and done. What you want to do is you want to create content in batches. Sit down, carve out two hours and create your videos, create your social shares, create whatever it is and then schedule it. As you're creating that content, don't, again, it's still not just willy-nilly, maybe I'll write about this, maybe I'll write about that. You want to have a theme that you're taking through the content. So as people see your status updates, once a week, they kind of get used to seeing you talking about this. They know that this is important to you. And you also need to be thinking about leading those people down a path to a desired outcome. Because again, you're not just posting because I want people to know me. No, you're posting because you want to build your brand image. You're posting because you want to step them through the early steps of your sales funnel so that they will eventually click off to get to your content. But there needs to be a purpose. And until you define the purpose, slide number one, it's hard to develop a content plan. If you don't know who you're talking to, it's hard to create that content plan. And if you aren't engaging and interacting, it's going to be hard to come up with relevant topics. So let's say that your objective is brand building. This is a pretty easy model to follow if what you're trying to just do is introduce yourself to the community at large. LinkedIn is not Facebook. I'm not going to show a ton of personal stuff, but at the end of the day, people buy from people. So it's okay to selectively share pers a bit of personal. What I try to do in one of the ways that I balance that personal and professional is I will often share one of my photographs from a vacation, from somewhere that I've been, and I match it with either a question or a lesson learned on that vacation. For example, I was driving through Nova Scotia. It was a beautiful windy road. And the post was really, I don't know what's around the bend, but I'm ready for the adventure because I've got a roadmap. And then I can go on to talk about my business plan. I People know that I like to take photographs and that's actually part of my brand. And so periodically I can show something that's actually being exhibited somewhere. It's not my core business. It gives them a little bit of insight into some of the other things I'm interested in. The second thing you want to do is focus on experience and results. Talk about, or better yet, let your clients talk about what it's like to work with you. What kind of things have you been doing? Do a post, share. We used to do this a lot with web designs, that web websites that we developed. We're really excited to show off this new website that we just built for this client. Or I just had a client tell me that they doubled their leads last month because of X, Y, or Z. I just had a client say this or that. I just got off the phone with a client talking about this. Something that gives people a little insight into some of the things that you do, 
some of your results. And if you've got a testimonial, here's a note I just got from a client. Again, you can't do this all the time, but you mix it in. You also want to make sure that in some of the content that you're sharing, you're talking about what makes you different. There are a ton of interior designers out there. One of the things that I do differently is, and again, give them an example, show them how that unique process has worked for someone. You want to demonstrate your expertise in little bites. Every now and then you want to give away a free tip or a free idea, but don't make this your standard because if you're always giving away free information, there's no reason to hire you. These pieces put together begin to build that that image of who you are. If you're less about brand building, if you feel like people have already got that sense of who you are, and instead what you're trying to do is get them to take action, you might want to think about this strategy, where step number one, it's about awareness of a topic that you're passionate about. Maybe you build awareness by asking a question. How do you handle this problem? How many of you have this issue? We just had this question come up in conversation and let people interact. People like to answer questions. They like to share their expertise. So pick a topic that you actually know something about, throw that conversation starter question out there. And then you can come back in a later post and say, you know, we had a lot of conversation about this and this, and I did some research and here's some things I found. In your third post, you might want to do something more community-based. And you can actually do this community piece in the first two. Sometimes I'll do this. I have a network of friends on LinkedIn. We are in a community. We share a lot of common expertise. And so I'll ask the question and maybe I only get one or two responses. Well, then in the comments, I will tag, hey, Lisa, I'd love to take hear your take on this or Marcy or David. I know that you work with people solving this problem. What would you suggest? When you tag people on LinkedIn, they are typically very likely to stop, look at the post, and interact with you. Now, if you're tagging somebody who has 60,000 followers on LinkedIn, eh, they aren't going to notice. But if they have approximately the same number of fans and followers that you do, they're kind of your peer on LinkedIn, they're more likely to go, oh, wow, that was really nice that they thought to tag me, to interact with me, to engage with me. And so they'll be more likely to participate in that conversation. That community conversation, again, it reinforces your position as a subject matter expert, as someone who is connected to other smart people. And so what kind of content? Some of the content that is doing really well on LinkedIn right now, multi-image posts, not just one picture, but a series of two or three images that people can rotate through like a carousel. One of the advantages with those multi-image posts is you can put together images that tell a story. The second thing that's doing well, this is doing well everywhere, are the video shorts. So if you are creating videos for TikTok, if you are creating videos for TikTok, if you're creating videos for video shorts on YouTube, a lot of that same content will work on LinkedIn. It is getting a little overused right now. I'm starting to see a lot of it. And so I'm actually looking to see what's next. 
one of the things that seems to be in that what's next category are live video events. LinkedIn loves when you are doing a video live from a streaming service to their platform. LinkedIn loves that, but I got to tell you, it's really hard to do that kind of live video all the time and be consistent. And so one of the things that you can do, and one of the things that I've done really effectively lately is I actually record a video like this presentation, and then I push it through my streaming service. I create a LinkedIn event. LinkedIn sends out an announcement that Lorraine is going to be live on this time and this day, and boom, the video goes out there. Because it's 15, 20, 25 minutes of content that will keep people on the LinkedIn platform, LinkedIn really likes it. The other thing is it used to be hard to become a LinkedIn creator. It's really easy now. You can just apply through your profile. And when you do, you have the option of creating a newsletter a daily newsletter, a weekly newsletter, a monthly newsletter, whatever works for you. The advantage is LinkedIn will send that newsletter to anyone who has subscribed and it will go out under the LinkedIn umbrella. I have an email newsletter and I have built a community on LinkedIn who subscribe to my newsletter on LinkedIn. I can send the same content to both groups. I can reach a much wider audience and I can see in real time how many people are engaging and interacting with that newsletter. The beautiful thing is if you've been doing newsletters for any length of time, you have weeks and weeks and weeks worth of content that you can just schedule ahead of time. And finally, I want you to keep in mind that on LinkedIn, your messages have to be for your audience. Don't worry about everybody. Make sure you are creating content that is relevant for your audience. And don't be afraid to use a little bit of engagement bait questions and polls, tagging individuals, resharing to small groups, getting a small subset within your community that has agreed that, look, when when I post something, will you comment on it? And then I'll comment on your content. And having that virtuous cycle, there are LinkedIn pods that do this in a more structured and organized manner. And I think that LinkedIn is getting wise to that. It doesn't feel as authentic. But when you just have people that are interacting that you know you can count on, every now and then I'll just send an email to or a text message within the LinkedIn system that says, hey, this is a really great post. Do me a favor. Will you like it? Put a comment so I can get a boost on it. And earlier I said that LinkedIn is penalizing you when you put a link in your posts. That does not mean you cannot drive people to your content. You can put links in the comments. If you put the very first comment right after it's posted, you pop up a link, that's not going to work. But if you have a post that has gotten a lot of comments and a lot of engagement, and then you put the link, the beautiful thing is that everybody who has liked and commented will get a note that there's a new comment on a post they're already following. And so you can, an hour later, two hours later, even going back a day or two later, put those comments in the content and create more engagement and interaction. If you're doing this well, you might spend an hour or two a week just creating content and using a scheduling tool to get it scheduled. And then 
every day. Hop on for a few minutes, like, share, comment, interact. Don't even worry about your content. The scheduling tool will take care of that for you. But you will build a community that will support you, interact with you, engage with you, and ultimately find their way to your website and your offer and do business with you. My name is Lorraine Ball, and if you'd like to learn more about LinkedIn and other tactics for managing social media in a zero-click environment, connect with me on LinkedIn. Subscribe to my LinkedIn newsletter. Take advantage of the free resources that I'm offering as part of this program. And look for more than a few words, my podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts.